Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Keynesian policy to manage the economy. In this video we're going to examine Keynesian policy and how it can be used to overcome an adverse aggregate demand side shock. So the example we're using here is adverse AD side shock, adverse aggregate demand side shock and this is a negative shock to the economy that causes the aggregate demand curve to shift left. So we start off with our long run aggregate demand aggregate supply model. We have it in equilibrium with a given price level and GDP level and what we are trying to show here is an adverse aggregate demand side shock maybe due to a decrease in consumption, due to a fall in uh, optimism and expectations amongst consumers, in which case the aggregate demand curve will shift downwards to the left, and we can indicate that shift leftwards with a couple of arrows. We can call that new aggregate demand curve aggregate demand one, and we can show a new equilibrium point. We can show point B, where in a classic recession, the price level has dropped and the output level has dropped as well to GDP 2 down here. So this has opened up what we call a recessionary gap in the economy. The short run output level is now below its potential level. This would mean in real terms job losses, increases in unemployment and would have a large real effect on the economy. So what Keynes would advocate is that Aggregate demand is made up of a range of five things, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Keynesian policy tends to advocate changes in government spending, which we term fiscal policy. So Keynes would ar uh, argue for use of fiscal policy to manage the business cycle and to return an economy to its potential output. In this case, following an adverse aggregate demand side shock, what Keynes would argue is that fiscal policy should be what's called counter cyclical. So to counter the cycle, counter cyclical means that when the demand falls in this economy, the government should be trying to stimulate extra demand. If the private sector, in this case the consumer, is not spending, well then the public sector should step in, the government should spend. And to counter this, when aggregate demand falls, we should use what's called expansionary fiscal policy. So expansionary policy, in terms of fiscal, would include government spending increasing, and or taxes reducing. And a combination of these policies would, if large enough, and if the multiplier, the fiscal multiplier is large enough, that would tend to increase aggregate demand. So aggregate demand increases. We know from previous videos that that is a rightward shift in aggregate demand. And a rightward shift in aggregate demand would bring the demand curve, if large enough, back to the initial level. So we would have an aggregate demand curve 2 here, with fiscal policy shifting the demand curve to the right, bringing it back up to point A, back up to where prices have inflated again, but importantly, back to its natural or potential GDP level at this point here. So that would reduce the unemployment rate back to its natural rate, and this would manage the business cycle overcoming what's called a recessionary gap. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.